Hello and welcome back to the lecture series on General Pharmacology. In this video, we'll discuss uh, sources of drugs, drug nomenclature and the basics of routes of drug administration. So let's start with the sources of drugs. Where do we get our medicines from? You will be surprised to know that most of our medicines come from plants. Example, pilocarpine, atropin, aspirin, etc. Some of them have quite interesting stories behind their discovery. Let me share a quick one with you. Digoxin, which is used for heart failure, is got from a plant called Digitalis purpura, or commonly known as foxglove. Digoxin was discovered by a Scottish doctor, William Withering. One of his patients had a worsening heart condition for which there was no effective treatment at that time. So Withering sent him off, saying he might die in the next few days. Months later, he spotted his patient on the street, quite fine and healthy. Later, he came to know that a gypsy treated the patient with a concoction of digitalis. There are many such stories like this. Do you know that Cleopatra is known to have used Datura extract, which has atropin on her eyes, to dilate her pupils to look beautiful? It's a fact that people look beautiful when their pupils are dilated. That's why we have candlelit dinners and maybe that's why even we take selfies in the restroom. So, what's with plant-derived drugs? Generally, they tend to be alkaloids, that is, they are basic in nature. And many of them have been replaced by synthetic substitutes. The next important source is from animals. Example, pork insulin, salmon-derived calcitonin, cod liver oil. The problem with animal-derived drugs is that they tend to cause immune reactions as the differences in the peptide sequences can trigger the immune system. We also use some of the metals as drugs, like iron is used to treat iron deficiency. We use zinc, magnesium, manganese, copper, etc. Advancements in chemistry and computer modeling has resulted in the ability to prepare our own drugs. Drugs can be synthetic when they are completely made from scratch in the laboratory or semi-synthetic when they are built on top of a substance that is produced or present in nature. The last but not the least is the recombinant DNA technology. Earlier we mentioned that drugs obtained from animals are immunogenic. This can be drastically reduced by synthesizing the substance by recombinant DNA technology. The human gene is spliced and inserted into a lower species like E. coli the bacterium. The peptides are extracted and purified for safe use in humans. The next topic is naming of drugs. Each drug has three names. Drugs are chemicals, so they have a chemical name. Now here's a table showing the three names. The chemical name is given by the IUPAC, which is an international union of chemists. We also have a generic name or non-proprietary name. As you can see, the chemical names could get so long and impractical to be used on a day-to-day -day basis. Hence, the IUFAR, which is an international union of pharmacists and pharmacologists, they decide on a common, unique name for use across all countries. Companies which manufacture drugs give the trade names or brand names so they can advertise and sell their own version of the drugs. In general, the WHO recommends prescribing by the generic name. The last topic for today is the routes of drug administration. As we learn about pharmacokinetics, we will see the different considerations for choosing a particular route of drug administration. Drugs can be given either enterally or parenterally. The enterum refers to the GIT. So, enteral routes include oral, buccal, sublingual, rectal, etc. The parenteral routes include subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, intraarticular, intraosseous, and intrathecal routes. We also have the intradermal route. The subcutaneous route, the drug is injected below the skin. 
in the intramuscular the drug is injected into the muscle in the intravenous it is injected into a vein intraarticular refers to the injection of drug into the articular surface between joints intraosseous into the bone and intrathecal into the spinal cord the route of drug administration can affect various pharmacokinetic parameters for example if a patient has seizure you would prefer a iv route because it has a faster onset of action whereas for a mild headache you might prefer to treat it with an oral tablet thank you